All right, so I'm going to make a video here of going through the practice test. I am going to move pretty quickly, so feel free to pause if you need to. Feel free to rewind and watch over certain things, or if there's things that you know how to do, feel free to skip through parts as well. Uh, I'm not going to show the calculations for everything, but I will try to hit uh, the calculations for at least one of each problem. Okay, so as we go through this, uh, this first one is really just asking like what calculations, how do we know uh, if we have congruent segments? And if we have congruent segments, we have equal distance. And our distance formula is the square root, don't forget that, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, and if we have equal distance, then we know we have congruent segments. If we have parallel lines, we have equal or congruent slopes. And using our slope formula, we have m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or sometimes you can do rise over run, but be careful. I see a lot of mistakes with positive or negatives with rise over run. And the last one, perpendicular lines. Uh, here we want opposite reciprocal slopes. So we're using this same formula to find our slopes, but then like an example, well, I'll do a variable one, so a over b and negative b over a, or I'll do a number one as well. Let's say we have one-fourth and negative four over one, our opposite reciprocals. So then we use these to be able to find different things. So if I look for the slope of py, I'm looking at this point and this point. Using my slope formula with P and Y, I get 2 minus 14 over negative 1 minus negative 5. Careful with negatives. And we get negative 12 over 4, which is negative 3. I'm not going to throw show the slope formula for each of these. So again, I'm going to kind of fast track through some of this. But you should get a slope here of negative 3 a slope here of one-third, and a slope here of one-third. And you're just using that slope formula. You can go back, check those. If you're getting mistakes, I go back and rework it. So we have found the slope of all of our lines here. We should already start to know some information here. Um, but next, we're moving to distance. And we're looking at distance of P and L, or the diagonal. Okay, again, I'll just do the distance formula for one of them. So I'm using P and L for this one. So as I use the distance formula, I have 5 minus negative 5 squared plus 4 minus 14 squared. And when I calculate this, I get 10 squared plus negative 10 squared which is 100 plus 100. And you can leave this as the square root of 200, or if you calculate it, you should get about 14.14, okay? And we're gonna again do the same. I'm gonna kind of fast track and not keep showing these formulas, but you should again get the square root of 200 or about 14.14. So again, if you're not getting that, please go back and check those answers. And then lastly, midpoint. Okay, our midpoint formula is, I'm going to write it here, small, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. And I always remember this because I should be getting a point. So if I find the midpoint of PL, I'm going negative 5 plus 5 over 2, 14 plus 4 over 2, or 0 over 2, and 18 over 2 which gets me 0, 9 as our midpoint here. Same idea with this one. Again, I'm going to fast track it, but this should get me a midpoint of 0, 9 as well, meaning that as I look at my diagonals here, I know that my midpoint is at 0, 9, and these are equal, and these are equal. So, what this tells me then is we should be able to name our P-O-L-Y. And we should know that this is a rectangle because diagonals are congruent, which is one of the things of our um, 
rectangle, we know that our opposite sides are parallel and we have perpendicular intersections as well. So as I look then, I have diagonals congruent and they bisect each other, which are all true for a rectangle. So that's the first part. Then you, the next part you kind of have to do on your own. So let's make sure we label everything correctly. We have A here at negative 3, 7, B at negative 2, 0, C at 8, 4, C, 8, 4, and D at 4, 6. Uh, sorry, that one should be 8, negative 4. I didn't think that looked right. 8, negative 4. And D at 4, 6. So this one is a little bit hard to identify what our shape is, or at least I thought so. But again, we need to just start calculating some of these things. Okay? So what I did is I started, that one is D, by finding the distance of each. Okay? So I found the distance of AD, the distance of AB, the distance of BC, and the distance of DC. And again, I'm not going to go through finding the distance for all of those, but I got square root 50, square root 50, those two are the same, this one square root 116, and this one square root 116. And I didn't calculate those as decimals, I left them. But what that tells me is I know these two are congruent, and these two are congruent. So I know then that this is a kite because I have consecutive um, sides that are congruent. So then it says, well, let's look at the diagonals, okay? If I look at my diagonals here, I should have a midpoint of 1, 3. So that is point M, okay? And so I'm seeing if these diagonals bisect each other. So I could find the distance of B, M, M, D, A, M, M, C, or I can look at the midpoint. So if I find the midpoint of B, D, I, again, I'm going to fast track. So I know this video is going to be on the longer side, but the midpoint is 1, 3. Okay? So I know then that these are equal based on it being in the middle. But as I look here at the midpoint of AC, I get 5 halves, or 2.5, and 3 halves, 1.5. Since these are not the same, they do not bisect each other. Other. Next one it says prove or disprove that the diagonals are perpendicular. So here I am not going to zoom out here, but you are finding the slope of BD and you are finding the slope of AC. Okay, and again I'm going to fast track this, but you should find the slope of this to be 6 over 6, which is 1 and the slope of this to be negative 11 over 11, which is negative 1. Since these are opposite reciprocals, reciprocals, then they are perpendicular. Okay? And that's what the summative part of your test is going to be on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when you're taking it. The formative side. I'm going to go pretty quickly through here because I don't want to spend a lot of time on the formative. This is a formula that we saw right away. N minus 2 times 180. We did that on Monday this week. This one had to deal with the pinwheels when I want uh, the central angle. And we're just going 360 divided by n. And the last one we mentioned also a little bit on Monday. And this is n minus 2 
times 180 divided by n. This is getting me one angle. So then I'm just using these. This first one, we're looking at central angle. So I'm going 360 divided by 8, 360 divided by 7, 360 divided by 100. And that gets me 45 degrees, about 51.428 degrees, and 3.6 degrees. So it should be pretty easy. We just got to know which formula to use. When I want the sum, this one is going here. There we go. Okay, so I have 8 minus 2 minus times 180. 7 minus 2 times 180. 100 minus 2 times 180. And this gets me 1080 degrees, 900 degrees, 17,640 degrees. And the last one, if I want each individual angle, I'm going 8 minus 2 times 180 divided by 8. We just calculated this. This is the 1080 divided by 8, which is 135 degrees. Same idea with this one. 7 minus 2 times 180 divided by 7. We just calculated the top. and it gets me about 128.571 degrees. And the last one, 100 minus 2 times 180 divided by 100, or again, the 17,640 divided by 100 gets me 176.4 degrees. Okay? And lastly, kind of putting it all together, here I have a hexagon, which I know by using my n minus 2 or my 6 minus 2 times 180 should tell me this is 720 degrees. And then I'm just picking an angle, 140 plus 105 going all the way around, x plus 30 plus 130 plus x minus 5 plus x plus 5 equals 720. Combine your x's, x, 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 3x. Combine everything else, 140, 105, 30, 130, negative 5, positive 5. You should get 405 equals 720. Then you're just solving. Subtract 405. You get 3x equals 315. Divide 3, and x is 105. Same idea with this next one. Here we have a pentagon which we can calculate is 540 degrees. A little bit harder maybe with the negatives. 80 plus negative 3x plus 125 plus 45 minus x plus negative x plus 90 equals 540. Combine x's. Negative 3x, negative x, negative x. It's you negative 5x. Combine numbers. 80, 125, 45, 90. Gives you 340 equals 540. Subtract 340. Negative 5x equals 200. Divide negative 5. X is negative 40. Whew, that's the formative side. Now we're back to the retakes and these proofs. Okay, I'm going to do two of them as flow charts. One is a two column proof, but really any of them go. Okay, notice all of these that I'm trying to prove are not triangles. So I'm going to use the CPCTC in my proof. So how do we start? Always start with the given. W, X, Y, Z is a rhombus. Wherever I have a bubble, I need a reason. Given. If it's a rhombus, what do we know about rhombuses? Well, all sides are equal. So WX is congruent to ZY. And you can maybe argue that you can do this all as one. I'll do it as two. WZ is congruent to XY. How do I know this? Definition of rhombus. Definition of rhombus. 
So what I know from a rhombus is that all sides are equal. So this is what I have, okay? I also have a shared side here. So I know that WY is congruent to WY. This is the reflexive property. Now, I always am going to prove that my triangles are congruent. So I then know that triangle WZY is congruent to triangle YXW. This one is side, side, side congruency. But I'm not done. I always finish with what I'm trying to prove. Angle Z is congruent to angle X by C, P, C, T, C. That's the first one. Next one. Hardest thing is knowing really what we are trying to find here. Okay? So I'm going to use my highlighter here. I am trying to prove that angle IHK, or this angle here, is congruent to JGK. So this is helping me then to be able to identify that I'm probably going to want to prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. So I'm going to do this one as a two-column proof. So I have statements. I have reasons. So start with your given. Triangle IJK and triangle HGK are equilateral. That's given. So what that just told me, that this triangle, all sides are equal. This triangle, all sides are equal. We maybe could put in there, I am going to kind of bypass this, so you could say that they are congruent sides. But I'm going to jump right to step two, which is angle IKH is congruent to angle JKG because they are vertical angles. Angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Then I know my triangles. Three. Triangle I K H is congruent to triangle J K G. This is side angle side congruency. And then lastly, again, end with what we're trying to prove. Angle I H K is congruent to angle J G K by C, P, C, T, C. Then our last one here, okay? I'll do this one back as a flow chart. J is midpoint of H, F, and G, I. This is given. What does this mean? I'm gonna have to define this, okay? So if it's the midpoint, that means H, J is congruent to JF, definition of midpoint. I know that IJ is congruent to JG, definition of midpoint. So here's what I've just said. Label it in the picture. Boom, 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 boom. Geometric conclusion, vertical angles, angle H, J, G is congruent to angle I, J, F. Vertical angles are congruent. Here and here. I have angle, side, side. Careful though, we don't swear in math class. My angle is between my sides. So I know triangle HJG is congruent to triangle FJI. This is side angle side congruency. Side angle side. And then lastly, finish with what we want. GH is congruent to HI by CPCTC. So again, rewatch as you need to. 
pause, go back, make sure that you are ready to be successful for your task.